uh, we have been recently talking about on the topic of deliverance, on the topic of demonic and uh, how people's lives can be set free. And tonight we're just going to take another step closer into that, knowing how to maintain our deliverance and know that God has a purpose and a destiny for every single person that is here tonight. You might be coming from a different background, different culture. You might be white, you might be black, you might be yellow, whatever that you're coming from. God has a destiny for every single person that is in this place tonight. Amen church? Do you believe it? Um, we have a challenge in this generation and the challenge in our generation is never to receive but to maintain. We can, every single person in this place, we have always longed for something nice, something, uh, something of value and when we received it, the challenge that we had was how do we maintain that? Is that correct? You know, many of us, you know, when we uh, begin to get a, a good paying job, once we get that good paying job, is how to maintain it, how to be punctual, how, is, how to always come on time, how to show up and show your best effort, to be committed to that and to show that your boss that you can really be at your best. Amen. Same thing when it comes to if you are working out, going to the gym, anybody can lose weight, but to maintain, you know, being healthy, that's kind of hard. Eating right food. Same thing when it comes to getting a car, getting to relationship getting married it's easy to receive but it's it a difficult challenge for us to maintain it whatever I obtain I must maintain tell your neighbor whatever I obtain come on say it louder louder whatever I obtain I must maintain whatever I maintain will multiply amen and I speak that over your life tonight that whatever that you will obtain that you will begin to maintain and whatever that you will maintain will begin to multiply in your life amen church we believe that as you have been coming to you know our church have been coming to this place for some time you've hear and you heard us speak on the topic of deliverance and this is a topic many times that's spoken in different places in different churches but it's a topic that we talk about in this place because we believe that there's an enemy that there's Satan who's out there to kill, to steal and to destroy your life. Amen. We've seen it happening when you, you see that you know uh, disappointment in relationship begins to reoccur. If you begin to see lack in your finances in everything that you do you have you cannot make enough money at the end of the uh, month to be able to see money in your bank account or is it the reoccurring sicknesses and you see that happening in your family maybe in your in your grandparents and your parents and now that it's happening to you and you see that reoccurrence and that reoccurrence simply says to us that there's an enemy who's out there to kill to steal and to destroy our life amen church and we cannot be ignorant about that. We have to recognize that there's Satan who is author of all pain, who is author of killing, who is stealing and destruction. And there is a God who is a giver of life and life more abundantly. Amen church? And that is what we have to recognize, that there is a black and then there's a white. We have to recognize and see whenever we see failure in our life, we need to not credit it to God and we say, God, why are you punishing us? But to understand that there's a Satan and he is the author of that failure. We know that everything good comes from God and everything bad comes from Satan and we have to recognize that. Amen church? And we understand that in this place that many people who begin to come to God, they will begin to receive the freedom. They begin to receive that deliverance. They begin to see how God begins to prosper their lives. And one thing that we want to speak about tonight is that when we come to God and God gives us a good life, God begins to set us free from maybe smoking, maybe it is from addiction, maybe it is from a, a torment life, maybe it's from depression or pain. That deliverance comes with a purpose. Amen church? Every deliverance that we receive in our life, it comes with a purpose and that's the topic that I want to speak to you about tonight. Deliverance with a purpose. Tell your neighbor deliverance with a purpose. Tell your other neighbor deliverance with a purpose. Many people come, uh, I've seen, a, uh, I've been in church for some time and I've seen it many over and over again. A lot of people come to church and they, and they crave this encounter with God. They come and their life gets changed and we see those people in the front. We see them, you know, once they give their life to Jesus, they begin to weep and they begin to cry and you see the like, you see them, you're like, 
man this person will change my city this this is the guy you know we see many talented people come to church we see many people whose life begins to radically change and we see that and we're like man this guy is gonna change the world but I have to tell you tonight that it's not the encounter with God that you receive that changes your life it is the choice that you make with Jesus that changes your life amen it is not the encounter we see I've seen it over and over again people weep at the altar they, they cry they even just just make so much noise and we're like man this is this is the next leader this is the next pastor you know they're gonna change the world and then they get a job and you never see him again in church and you ask hey well you know how, how you been you know how's how's everything I haven't seen you in church and what's going on with your life and they tell you I'm busy that's the, that's the thing I'm just I'm God has been good to me brother God is blessing me and you never see him at church again and it's like you know God has not delivered you from the, what he has delivered you from just so you can have a good life but he had delivered you for a purpose for a destiny amen church and, and this, this uh, today, uh, I just want to read something that one of the ladies that comes to our church, she uh, sent me a, a text and she said, I, I, I actually kind of like, like these things that they say. And she said this, Martin, I have a problem. My car has four, pa my car can only have four passengers and I like to invite more people to church, but my car is full. So I can't fit them and they and they don't drive do you think somebody would like to borrow me a minivan so I can bring him on Thursdays to church and that 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 is a person that you see and this person many of you will not know this person doesn't hold the mic on stage this person even doesn't pray out loud but once that person received an encounter with God they did something with Jesus Christ and you see how this this person begins to bring people that even she cannot even fit in the car to be able and she's begging people give me a minivan that I can bring people to church and this is this is something to say it is not the encounter with God that changes your life but what you do with Jesus that begins to change your life begins to change your city and your family tree amen church and this is what I want to talk um, to you tonight that don't don't crave for the encounters don't say God I want to you know have this big encounter but it's the small things that God gives you what do you do with that the love the presence of God that you begin to experience during worship the testimonies that you hear that can change your life that you can make an impact in your family in your cities in your co-workers life that you can bring a change to your city amen church deliverance with a purpose somebody say deliverance with a purpose let us open to our proof text uh, this evening. It's going to be in Matthew chapter 21. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 to 5 and also we're going to read from verses 10 to 11. If you haven't brought your Bible, we're going to read on the screen. It's a little small but uh, just follow along with me. It says, now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to uh, Bethphage at the mountain of olives, then Jesus said to disciples saying to them, go into the village opposite of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a cold with her loose them and bring them to me verse 3 and if anyone says anything to you you shall say the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them all of this was done that and it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell the daughter of Zion behold your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey a cold the full of a donkey and if you can uh, go to verses 10 to 11 says and when he has come into Jerusalem all the city was moved saying who is this so the multitude says this is Jesus the prophet of from Nazareth of Galilee first point I want you to write down is the prof process of deliverance there's two types of deliverance that will take place if you have notes I want you to be able to follow along with me because I believe that what will be spoken tonight is not going to be from my experience but going to be from the word of God that can benefit your life and they can bring deliverance and freedom into your life there's two type of deliverance there's there's freedom that is a found freedom that is found in Jesus Christ many of us when we come to church when we begin to attend services whatever church that you attend to maybe it's your home groups that there's a freedom that is found in that there's things that might be bound binding you in your life there's might be things that that are holding you captive when you come to Jesus Christ you begin to instantly receive a freedom 
We have many testimonies in this place where people were struggling with depression, where they begin to uh, struggle with self mutilation begin to struggle with suicidal thoughts. And the moment they give their life to Jesus Christ, Jesus immediately begins to set them free. In this story that we read in Matthew, this donkey, we have to understand this is a, it's, it's a peculiar donkey. It's not just a regular type of donkey. This donkey was prophesied about way before its existence. This donkey was spoken that there's going to become a day that, that, that Jesus Christ was going to sit on this donkey and he's going to bring it to the city and the city was going to be moved. We have to understand how this story relates to us that we are also like this donkey. That before we were created, we, there was a prophecy that was spoken about us that we're going to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Before the mess that we got into, before we were tied to a pole to our problems, Jesus Christ was already formed us in our mother's womb. He begotten us and he called us uh, uh, from his name. He said that you are an apple of my eye. You are a chosen generation. You are peculiar people. You are priests. You're going to be seated in the high places with God before you were in your mess before this donkey was even created before this donkey was going to be bound to a post there was already a prophecy that was spoken about this donkey and this what speaks to us how we relate to that is that Jesus Christ has spoken to us before the mess that we got ourselves into. Jesus Christ knew us before even the bondage that you're experiencing tonight. Maybe it is alcohol addiction. Maybe it's suicidal thoughts. Maybe it's self-mutilation. Maybe you're contemplating how you're going to divorce. Maybe you contemplate how you're going to walk out out of your family. That there's so much depression going on. Before the mess that you got yourself in, Jesus Christ knew you and the things that you're going to experience. Jesus Christ knows every single thing and every detail that's going to happen in your life. We have to understand that God has a plan for each one of us before Satan has bound us. God has a destiny for every single person that is sitting here tonight before the mess that we found ourselves in. And you might not even know it. You might even just show up here tonight. You might say, you know what? You know, this is my life. This is what I'm going through. This is just the life I'm experiencing. I'm just going, I have cancer and this is, this is, this is it. This is my death. This is what doctor's report had given me. Maybe you're here tonight and you know, and you've been, you've been uh, maybe abused. Maybe you've been rejected. Maybe you were abandoned by a family. Maybe you were going through divorce. Maybe you're facing an impossible situation. You have to understand before Satan had his hands on you, God had a plan for you. Since the beginning of creation, God has a plan for your life and there's a prophecy over your life that there's a destiny for you and God is going to untie the thing that is binding you and use you to move a city in your, in your area. Amen, church? There's going to be a prophecy where Jesus Christ can take the mess that you are in and turn it to a message for maybe for your family, maybe to call your co-workers, maybe to your state, whatever that you are, the mess that you're going through, Jesus Christ wants to use it for a message for your generation amen church and you can say how do I know that Jesus Christ has a destiny for my life well the chain that is holding you right now that is a sign that God has a plan for you so you have to understand devil will not attack your life if he doesn't know that you're a threat devil will not begin to strangle your life begin to put chains upon your life if he doesn't know that God has a plan for you because God has a plan for you Satan will do everything that he can to make sure to tie you to a post that God's plan will never come to your past in your life Satan will do everything that he can to make sure that God will not fulfill his destiny and purpose in your life the chain and the bondage that you're going through right now is a clear sign that God has a plan for you because devil is doing everything that he can to destroy your life. You might be here today and you might be going through a tough season in your life and this is a sign that God knows you, that God knew you before you were born in your mother's womb. He made you and he inscribed your name on the palm of his hands. He said, I have a destiny and I have a plan for you. Your plan for you is to prosper you, to make you the head and not the tail. To make you the one with an authority that when you walk in you'll be blessed, you'll be walk out and you'll be blessed. That your mess that you're going through will be a message to a dying generation generation amen church put your hands together for Jesus Christ Amen. 
We have to understand that, that the donkey was tied to a post. And Jesus Christ has sent his disciples to them. He said that there's going to be a donkey in a certain place. And it's going to be tied to a pole. It's going to be bound. I don't want you to lose it. We have to understand that that post that the donkey was bound to it could be an event it could be something that happened to us in the past it could be maybe what your parents has called you maybe it is that you know maybe your friends called you maybe it's an, a thing that happened to you that nobody ever knows you and that what gives you your identity that what binds you that's what limits you you cannot go forward you cannot think of your future because the only thing satan keeps reminding you of your past what you've done what you left undone the mistake that you've done and you begin to remember that and that is your post but i have a message for you tonight that jesus christ has sent his disciples his servants to deliver you and say that there's a destiny and a purpose for your life that their city is going to be moved amen church put your hands together for jesus christ Many, many people say that, you know, the, the thing that was done to me is so painful. It's so, um, it, it hurts so much that you don't even know what was done to me. You don't even know how far I've gone. You know how low I've fallen. You don't even know how many times I came to church and I promised God to do something. But every time I come, I fall. I feel like the most hypocrite. Well, this is what makes me to understand that if God could deliver a nation of Israel that was bound for 400 years, how much more can God who can deliver you from the small problem that you experience? You can't tell me that God cannot see your problem of, of maybe 40 years or maybe 70 years that you're struggling. Maybe five years that you're struggling with and you're saying it's been so painful, been so long. I don't believe God can do it. God delivered a nation of Israel, 400 years of bondage. How much more God can deliver you from the pain that you're experiencing and set you on the road to your destiny and your freedom. Amen church. We serve a big God. Amen. We serve a mighty God to whom nothing and nothing is impossible church. And there's another freedom that is found, also it is found in a process. First freedom that we find, it is found in Jesus Christ. And there's a second freedom that is also found in a process. Many people who begin to attend services, begin to come to church, begin to come involved, they would find that there's certain addictions, certain problems that they're experiencing that they do not just leave by them coming to the altar call. They come to prayer lines uh, such as this and we see many people being delivered. They come to leaders, they ask for prayer and every time they feel like this darkness just begins to overtake them and they begin to destroy their lives. There's also a freedom that is that takes place in a process. What I mean by process is that you grow in Jesus Christ. It says in the Bible, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That knowing the truth is growing in Jesus Christ. As you begin to grow in Jesus, there's a freedom that you begin to, to begin to experience and that freedom is found in your devotional time with Jesus Christ. As you begin to come to morning prayers, as you begin to open up your, your Bible, begin to read, you begin to understand what the Word of God says to you, there's a freedom that is found in that. Many of us will, will receive that freedom tonight when we give our life to Jesus. But many of us will receive that freedom as we grow in Jesus Christ. And I know that has been, that happens to many of us. And many times we come to church and we experience that little bit of freedom. We're like, oh God, thank you. And we see that bondage begin to come back to us. And we, we, we begin to question, God, why me? Why, you know, why don't I just go to a prayer line like, like my neighbor and get delivered right away? Why don't I just, you know, receive freedom right away? But Jesus Christ wants you, the certain bondages, that when they bind your life, you can only break them by growing in Jesus Christ. And that happens through your devotion with time with Jesus when it comes to morning prayers when it comes to attending your home groups when it comes to night prayers that you begin to attend those because there's a freedom that is found in a process with Jesus Christ amen church as you grow with Jesus you begin to experience that freedom that Jesus Christ has for you amen church and number two now the second point that I want to talk to you about is that freedom is not to do what you want but what you ought have you ever seen a donkey anywhere in your life just roaming about without a, without a master? Has anybody ever seen a, a horse just roaming about and not have a master? 
We have not seen that in, 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 in natural life. We're not seeing that ever. A donkey just roaming about and nobody has to claim for it. Same thing happens when we receive deliverance, when we receive freedom. We don't receive freedom just to be free. We receive freedom that we can have and be bound to a different master and that's Jesus Christ. Amen church? There's this, there's this um, how can I say, a sick thinking that people come to church and say, I want to be set free from depression. I want to be set free from drugs so I can do what I want. Have you guys heard that before? <laughs> you know, I want Jesus to deliver me so I can live a good life. You know, I want to, Jesus to deliver me so I can do what I want. You know why Satan fell from heaven? Because Satan wanted to be God. Satan, Satanism, it's not, you know, worshiping evil or anything. Satanists, they worship self. They, they, they worship and they do whatever they want. There's something worse than being addicted to drugs. It's becoming a God. It's doing what you want because that's why Satan has fallen from heaven. Because said, I will become like a God. And that's when God kicked him out of heaven and this is where Satan has ended up. So we have to understand that freedom is not that we can do what we want, but we can do what we ought to do, is to have our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen, church? Freedom is not just being delivered from evil, but replacing that evil with Jesus Christ. Amen, church? We are to be free with a purpose. We are to be delivered with a purpose. And that purpose is to win souls and make disciples. Amen, church? Being free is a dangerous ground. Being free is dangerous when you are not filled. It is dangerous to be free when you are not occupied and when you will not have a master. We have to understand the Bible clearly, clearly talks about, it says that if you are not hot and if you're not cold, Jesus Christ will spew you out of your mouth. He, he, it's, it's, it is dangerous for us to sit in the middle, to be able to just attend church and not get involved, not to get to know Jesus Christ because it's a dangerous ground. Sooner or later, you'll begin to slide back. And when people come to the altar call and they give their life to Jesus and I get a chance to meet with them, to talk to them and I, and I tell them one thing, do everything you can to get involved. Do everything you can not to be free because that freedom is a disguise. Is that freedom that you think I can do whatever I want where Satan is lurking behind that freedom and he'll capture you right back. You have to understand you will never be free. You'll be a slave to something. You'll either be slave to sin or to Jesus Christ. You will be either a slave to Jesus or to Satan. You cannot live a life that is free. It's not possible. Sooner or later you understand you, if you do not become a slave to Jesus Christ you will become slave to depression. You will become slave to suicidal thoughts. You become slave to sickness. You become slave to something but you can never live a life that's just free. You will be a slave to something and it's to be a slave to Jesus Christ is that as we want because Jesus Christ says I came to give life and life more abundantly. Amen. When you become, when Jesus Christ has become your master, when Jesus Christ becomes your everything, that is a life worth living. That is a life with peace. That is a life with comfort. That is a life that when somebody looks and says, you know, I wish to have that life because that is a life that is found in Jesus Christ. Amen church. You'll never be free. You will, either, you will either be a slave to Jesus or you'll either be slave to Satan. And I believe as you are here tonight, you will choose to have a master who is Jesus Christ. Amen, church. We'll choose to have a master who died, who rose again, and who lives again to see that we have a life and life more abundant. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. You know, we've seen many people in, um, that, that come to church and they get, get saved. And as they give their life to Jesus Christ, they understood one thing. The extent that I served Satan, the extent I party, the extent I smoked weed, the extent I, you know, I, I walked around, I did whatever I wanted to, to the same extent I'll begin to serve Jesus Christ. And we see many people, even uh, some people that you know in this place, the moment they give their life to Jesus, the money that they use to spend on drugs, on weed, on smoking, on alcohol, the same amount of money they begin to give to church. And that is a lot of money. <laughs> I remember one person who, who, who does not, who's not from this state, is actually just watching us online. 
she the moment she gave her life she came here she was delivered she got set free from a party lifestyle you know just sleeping around that right away when Jesus Christ has changed her life she started putting away a jar and all the money that she would spend on going out you know uh, on, on drugs and she would be putting the money uh, there and she would bring it the moment when she would visit us she would bring it to church for the offering one time it was like seven thousand dollars she was like whoa man that's a lot of money and one time I was like why why are you doing that and this person's like to the same extent that I served Satan the same extent now I'll give everything to God and that when I saw that I was like that is a person who's truly change mastered they change masters from Satan to Jesus Christ and now it's not that they're like well now you know Jesus Christ has set me free from drugs I can you know live an American dream I can buy a house you know I can I can get a dog you know I can buy a jet ski you know I can get a BMW that breaks all the time I can live a good life you know but this person said you know what the money that I spent to do evil this is the money I'll spend to do good and we know even some people that are sitting here with us tonight as they're giving their life to Jesus as God has set them free from smoking and drinking they begin to give paychecks away just recently a, a guy just began to give a car away and this is to show that a life that is changed amen church this to show you that the the extent that they used to serve Satan is the same extent they begin to live the life of Jesus Christ and even more with their finances with their support you know inviting people to church giving their life to Jesus Christ amen church and that is is show you that that is a deliverance with a purpose amen church and you know this the, before today church when I received that text from a lady you know you would not see this the, this girl you know being praying like crazy or to be you know with the microphone standing but when her life was changed nobody thought she was just a quiet girl but today she's bringing people that that you don't even know how many people got saved because of her is just insane but that to show you that when she was delivered she understood that there's a destiny that there's a purpose for her life not just to live a life that is free that I do whatever I want that Jesus Christ has a purpose for my life the mess that I got out now will become a message to a dying generation and today she's bringing more people that even I brought this year and it's challenging me because it's to show you that that is a deliverance with a purpose church we're not just to come to church just so we can be you know that we can feel good so we can you know pastor can say challenge your message and yes this is good we have to understand behind four walls of the church there's thousands of people who still do not know God there's thousands of people who are in depression pills there's thousands of people who are contemplating suicide who's sleeping around who do not know what love is thousands of people who do not know who they are and they're just looking that in drugs in a boyfriend a girlfriend there are thousands of people and God has raised you God has delivered delivered you God has given you a message of hope not so you can feel good but you can bring a message to them so you can tell them that God loves them God wants to set them free God can give them a purpose God can give them a vision for the life that is beyond them that God can give them a life and life more abundantly amen church that is why God has delivered us that is why God has set us free to live a life with a purpose amen church And, uh, and when, when Moses comes to Pharaoh and in, uh, in the Bible over nine chapters, 17 times, Moses says to Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. You know, and that many times we get it confused that, you know, we get delivered from the addictions and we get delivered from certain dark habits that, that was in our lives so we can, you know, be free. But when Moses asked Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me, you know, being delivered, being set free, you know, giving our life to Jesus Christ is not so we can live a, a, a good life, but also that we can live a life with a purpose. Amen, church? And the last point I want you to write down is that Jesus' purpose for the donkey is the city. Jesus' purpose for the donkey is the city. God wants to use your life, the, the life that you give to Jesus Christ, that you can move a city that you can move a generation, that you can rewrite the history of your family. Maybe you're here tonight and you think that, look, um, my life is nothing to roam about. My life is just messed up. The mistakes that I've made, you know, and I don't know if God can forgive me. You have to understand the donkey was tied. 
The donkey's life was destroyed, was bound by a certain sin, was bound with a certain addiction. But before the mess that donkey got himself in, before the mess that you got yourself in, Jesus Christ had a purpose for your life. Jesus Christ had a destiny for your life. Doesn't matter how broken you are, doesn't matter the mistakes that you have, Jesus can turn that around and make it for his good. Amen. Because Satan tries to destroy your life because he knows and he knows if you give your life to Jesus, how many lives you will save. Satan knows if, if you to be on fire for Jesus, if you just begin to tell your friends that God loves them, if you tell your friends how God has set you free, he knows that you will turn a city around. He knows that your friends will get saved. He knows that that's why he's attacking your life. The extent that Satan is attacking your life to the same extent you have to understand God has a purpose. If your life has been shattered all the way, you have to understand God has a bigger and a bigger plan for you. If, if your life has been broken and, and it's shattered into pieces and you think there's, I will never amount to nothing. This is to show you that God is bigger than your mess and God can turn that around and make it into something great for a man church. And um, yeah, I have a, a friend named Juan. And um, you know, he a long time ago actually, he came here and he... He shared how God has set him free from drugs, how God has, you know, delivered him and, and uh, put him on the right path with God. But he would never be shy about what God has done in his life. And he would always and always share about what God has done to others. And every time he would go somewhere, he would always say, hey man, you got to come to church. And that time, he was not from the state, he's actually from Florida. And when he would, he would come to that church service here, Hungry Generation, he's like, he told one of his neighbors, hey, come to church with me and you'll see how, you know, I'm going to share my testimony. And that person came here. From that point, that person's life was changed. And since then, that person, and today, that person is, is my wife. To today, that person... Uh, that person today last year last year alone brought 16 people to Jesus Christ and they gave their life to Jesus and that's 16 families that is 16 marriages that's 16 careers that have been changed that is that is a city and those 16 people you don't even imagine how many people are going to be changed because of those 16 people but it took one person whose name was Juan to be able to 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 share the gospel if Juan never shared the gospel with his neighbor today I will not be married to her today 16 people who got saved last year alone will not be saved today many people who started their home groups will not be starting their home groups today but just it took one person to realize that I was delivered for a purpose I wasn't delivered just so I can live a good life I was delivered because Jesus wants to come into a city and the city is going to be moved because of my message we have to understand that part that your deliverance, your good life, your skills, your abilities that God given you is not for yourself. Money comes with it. Peace comes with it. Happiness comes with it. House, car, marriage, they come with it. But the main purpose that Jesus did it is that a city can be moved. A city can be changed and in our city we have we have governors in our cities we have doctors we have lawyers we have bums we have doctors we have so many people whose life can be changed but we have to recognize that our deliverance our life is not just so we can live a good life but it is for a city it is for a city that Jesus Christ has died for we have to understand the part that Jesus Christ did not just die just for us but he also died for the whole world. That's why when our life, when we begin to come to church, when we begin to surrender our life to Jesus, we do not stop there. We do not stop when we begin to be delivered from the addictions of smoking. We do not get stopped when we get delivered from, you know, depression, from suicide. Maybe God has healed you from a disease that is very rare. Maybe God has, you know, saved your marriage. Maybe God has brought you out of a darkest pit. If you share your testimonies, people will be amazed. But doesn't, doesn't stop here. God is involved and God cares about his city. Do not forget the city. And I remember um, a gentleman that just got recently saved. And we had, a, uh, you know, listening to him and he said that, you know, that if I know why God has set me free. He said, I have so many teenagers, I have so many people who are out in the streets. And I want to be able to know that, you know, God has raised me for them and to bring a message of hope to them. 
how many people that are here tonight that you might not even see holding a mic but they understand one purpose that God has set me free because there are families that are in darkness there are school teachers there are our lawyers there are doctors who are waiting for my message of hope and I want to challenge you tonight you know next week we have a miracle catch next week we have a, a service just dedicated where we're going to bring our friends who do not know Jesus I challenge you bring a friend I challenge you bring somebody who do not know Jesus Christ reassure them that Jesus Christ still loves them reassure them that the God who heals all type of diseases all type of infirmities as a God who delivers every type of addiction as a God to whom nothing is impossible be a messenger of hope be a messenger to show that there's a city and Jesus Christ is willing to use me you might say I have addictions I might have problems so did the donkey but when you become available for Jesus Christ that addiction that bondage begin to fall off you because Jesus knows your addiction it doesn't compare to the city that needs to hear the message of hope your darkness your bondage your uh, your weakness does not compare to the masses that still yet to know Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ will meet you at the point of your need amen church the the bondage the lack that you're experiencing is nothing for Jesus because Jesus has a bigger mission and that is to reach a city amen church and we believe as 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 we become available for Jesus that thing that's begin to bind us we begin to fall off amen church that thing that begins to put chains on us will begin to fall off because Jesus knows that a city will be moved when you become available for him amen church I want us to rise up on our feet right now every single person